Hello and welcome to today's video. I'm really excited to do this one with you. Today we're going to be doing a liver support tier list. So I've gathered all of the different liver support supplements, healing modalities, alternative therapies. I've grabbed them all and shoved them in one big list and we're going to rank them from best to worst. Let's swap over to the tier list. We've got a really good list here and I'm really excited to go over these with you. So let's start with a really easy one. I always find it a little bit intimidating when I'm when I'm doing a tier list because I like to make it a live reaction. I don't actually know where I'm going to put these things until we do the list. I know what they are but I don't know where they're going to go. So we're going to start with this one. This is fasting. Unquestionably S tier. You can't beat fasting. Fasting is fasting is what animals do in nature. You know, when uh when a dog doesn't feel well, it will just go and lay under a tree and it won't eat anything and it will just wait until it feels better. The reason I have to put this in S tier is your liver does so many different things and it's actually part of your digestive system. You use it to digest all of your fats and your fat soluble vitamins, but also every single thing that comes from your digestive system. This includes medications, supplements, foods, even toxins that you produce in your gut. Every single thing that comes from your digestive system has to go through your liver first. So when you're fasting, you're not eating, you're taking an enormous weight off of your liver. And a lot of the time, all your liver needs to heal is a break. It needs some time, some space. So for that reason, fasting has to go absolutely S tier. Fasting also enhances the benefits of every single other modality on this list, because many of the things on here are about supporting the body and the liver to have what it needs to function. So we need to give it what it needs and then give it time to get to work. So for that reason, S tier, very easy. Okay, next one, we're gonna do castor oil. So this is actually castor oil packs. So a castor oil pack is where you get this oil and you basically put it on a tap and cover your liver, your upper right abdominal area. Then you put a hot water bottle on it. Now, I personally really like castor oil packs. The thing is, they are really messy. They are extremely messy. For that reason, I'm going to bring it down to C tier. Honestly, the mess, there's maybe only two other things on this list that are even comparatively messy. It's mostly the mess that's bringing this score down. What I will say is, if you are very sensitive, if you don't tolerate things very well orally, this might be something really nice to try because it's transdermal. It's through the skin. Castor oil can work really well to help with fatty liver or if you have any cirrhosis. It also works really well on other areas of your body. If you've got cysts on your kidneys or if you have scar tissue somewhere, castor oil packs applied through the skin can be really effective. If I took the mess component out of it, I'd probably put it in maybe A tier just because it's generally very well tolerated. It's very easy to adjust the dose because you just do it for less time and it does work really well. However, it is extremely messy. Imagine being covered in oil and this isn't just like a regular oil. This isn't like olive oil or coconut oil. This is thick. This is sticky. This is probably closer to covering yourself in honey. And then when you try to clean it off, you can use as much soap as you want. It just does not come off. You have to literally like grind the top layer of skin off with a paper towel or some toilet roll or something. And if you get this on your clothes or on your carpet, on your sofa, it is a very deep stain. It's very hard to get out. So all these things bring it down to, to C tier. Next on this list, we've got another really good one. I'm going to go with apple cider vinegar. Now it's going to be S or A. I'm sure it's going to go in one of these, but let's think about it. So think with me here. It's got probiotics in it. Probiotics are very good for liver health. It behaves like a digestive bitter. So it's definitely definitely going to have to go above digestive bitters. So it's going to have to go at least one step above because it's like digestive bitters, but better. It also is full of enzymes. So we have digestive enzymes in here as well. So it's it's going to have to go pretty high. I think for me, the thing that pushes it into S tier is the fact that it has many other benefits other than just your liver. For example, let me give you a, let me give you a really cool one. If you take one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar before you eat any meal that has carbohydrates. So this could be if you're going for a pizza, if you're having pasta, if you're eating donuts or cookies if you take one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar before you do you can reduce the blood glucose spike that you have by between 15 and 30 percent depending on the person so if we would if we were talking strictly liver health i'd probably put it a tier but but apple cider vinegar has so many other benefits it has to go up in s tier it's also really high in malic acid which can help to break down gallstones which really really supports the liver's ability to function correctly so it's s tier it has to be next on the list we're going to look at nac N acetylcysteine. So I tried this and I didn't get on well. I didn't get on very well with it at all. Give me a really nasty headache. This could be because I have a CBS gene mutation, but I don't know. I just know it didn't really get on with me. And my personal bias wants to put it all the way down here because it didn't do anything for me. However, it is a precursor to glutathione. So you use cysteine, glutamine, and glycine, and this is NAC, N acetylcysteine. So this is almost like a core nutrient. So I'm gonna bring it up one point. It can function for some people as a biofilm buster, but I don't think that that's enough to bring it up to be 
tier. So it's going to go in C tier. I don't know. You tell me. What do you think? Where do you think NAC should go? This is a tricky one for me. I also haven't really heard of anyone saying like, I took NAC and it changed my life. I just haven't heard that. So I'm going to stick it here for now. Next up, we've got the liver gallbladder flush. So I think it's going here. And I'm going to explain my reasoning. First of all, this one is also very messy. So what you do is you take Epsom salts, you drink them. And then just before you go to bed, you get half a cup of olive oil, half a cup of lemon juice or grapefruit juice and you blend it together and that's what you can see here in this picture this is the grapefruit and the olive oil being mixed together and you drink it and it causes a very strong contraction of your gallbladder and it can push stones out and even out of your liver as well so it is really effective however the reason it can't go higher is so let's put it up here let, let me tell you why it's coming down so it's coming down one tier because it's messy you literally have to take a whole day off of work and you just have to be in your house you're just going to have diarrhea all day which is definitely not good so we're bringing it down one for that the second reason that it would come down another point i did one towards the beginning of my healing journey and it was definitely way too strong for me and knowing what I know now I still don't even think that it would be as beneficial for my body considering the amount of stress that it's going to put my body through so I know some people that have done 10 or 20 of these and they swear by it and they say they're going to continue to do it and I've seen some of the stones they get out and they are really massive liver and gallstones but it is kind of harsh and it is really messy so for that reason I'm bringing it down to beat it I think we'll just get this one out of the way because I think it's going to be quite easy we're going to do digestive bitters now I know I said that they had to be below apple cider vinegar but honestly Honestly, considering the other things we have on this list, I think we probably have our first D tier. The reason being, it's so easy to get bitters in your diet. And when we're looking for more specific digestive support, we have a lot of other supplements that do that better, like digestive enzymes down here. So I'm going to stick it in D tier, but I'm going to move swiftly on to something that I think does this thing's job better, which is juicing. So we have juicing here. Now, juicing is also kind of a pain in the ass. It's a lot of work. And I think for that reason alone, I am going to bring it down to A tier, but I can't put it lower than that because it is so beneficial for the liver. You get so many different polyphenols, you get enzymes, you get many any different compounds like vitamins and minerals it can also really help balance the microbiome you've got soluble fibers different types of antimicrobial compounds juicing is phenomenal i would if you if you didn't have to juice it you know if you could just buy this and it wasn't super expensive would definitely be an s tier but when we bring in the consideration of how much of a pain in the ass is to do and it doesn't keep very long you know you have to do it every two days and it's just really a lot of work i have to bring it down by one point but as far as effect is concerned it's definitely an s tier and it's generally very well tolerated as well i will give you you one little tip and that is try straining the juice after you've made it put it through a really fine mesh sieve or put it through a cheesecloth get all those little bits of fiber out i really don't like that texture in my mouth and i think that the juice is just more effective and better if you can remove those extra fibers so solid a tier where do you think we should go next we've got about 10 more candidates let's go with activated charcoal so this one has a placeholder for all different types of binders so i'm including in this things like bentonite clay maybe even chlorella and spirulina but more specifically activated charcoal i'm not going to include pharmaceutical binders in here like cholestyramine but what i am going to say is i think it deserves a place in b tier it's a solid b tier so the reason that i'm even considering this a liver health supplement is because as i mentioned previously everything that comes from your digestive system has to go through your liver first so if you have toxins in your gut if you have gut dysbiosis if you have anything happening in your digestive system that is poisoning your body it is directly directly poisoning your liver and if we can use binders we can basically hold that toxicity in the gut and it never absorbs and it just leaves in the stool so not only is this helpful from a detoxification perspective as in it allows the toxins that are released when we release bile to have something to be bound to but it can also prevent auto intoxication so it can reduce the amount of toxins that we're absorbing from our own guts it's also generally very well tolerated and it's very easy you can just get it in capsules or you can get it as powder here it's very easy to do but you also kind of do need to plan it a little bit you can't take it really with food so that's another reason why it's only going to be in b tier because it does require a little bit of planning and logistics but again as i said earlier this pairs really nicely with fasting generally fasting pairs well with everything on here it's good with juicing fasting's good with this it's good with the liver gallbladder flush but yeah solid place in b tier now i think we're going to do two in one we're going to go for the antioxidants so we're going to do glutathione and vitamin c i think that they're both going to go next to each other but the vitamin c is going to go one tier above the glutathione just because it's less expensive so i think we should figure out where glutathione goes and then we're just going to put probably vitamin c just one above it so thinking about it i'd probably put it in b tier as well the thought process is that the liver has several processes that it needs to do to remove toxins these are things like 
like methylation, acetylation, glucuronidation, and one of the things is glutathione conjugation. So if you don't have enough glutathione, this liver detoxification pathway can't function correctly. So it is very important, it's generally very effective, and often well tolerated. I personally don't seem to tolerate this very well. It always gives me an upset stomach, and I think that's because it activates the immune system quite, quite powerfully. And I do still have a bit of a gut dysbiosis situation going on. You know, when you have a history of chronic infections, chronic fatigue syndrome, it does take time for your body to get on top of these things. So I'm going to stick it here, and consequently, I'm going to take vitamin C and stick it one above. The thought process as to why this gets to go higher than the glutathione is vitamin C has this really cool antioxidant sparing effect. So if you take vitamin C, you will actually increase your natural levels of glutathione just because all of the other antioxidant jobs that glutathione had to do can be done by vitamin c instead it's almost like this sacrificial molecule that will that will sacrifice itself it will it will basically commit suicide it will bind to a toxin and spare glutathione or the body can actually recycle glutathione using vitamin c so it will take so it will take the reactive oxygen species that have been bound to glutathione and stick them on vitamin c instead effectively reducing the glutathione so it's an active molecule again and it can be used and then we can use it in these reactions that I talked about previously. So it's much cheaper and it's much easier to get higher, more effective doses in a cost-effective way. Can be a bit problematic for some people with digestive problems because it's very acidic. These are two that I've personally struggled with quite a lot, both the vitamin C and the glutathione. But for some people, these are absolute game changers. So they definitely deserve their place here. Now we're gonna take a look at the trusty lemon water. So I kind of feel bad putting lemon water on the same level as juicing because in juicing, often you are juicing citrus and the benefits of, of say lemon juice versus lemon water lemon juice is definitely better so I think just with that train of thought alone it would make me want to put it down here into B tier but then I think about how easy this is it's so easy to just chop up a lemon and squeeze it into some water versus juicing which is extremely labor intensive so for that reason I'm going to stick it back up and it looks weird to me seeing both of these on the same tier I think that the lemon water should definitely be below in B tier but even though juicing is superior if it's if it's great but you never do it because it's so much work it basically may as well be in d tier because you're never doing it so for that reason i am going to put the lemon water up here in a tier just because you do get many of those benefits that you get from juicing you get some enzymes the citrus contains many acids which are really helpful in stimulating bile overall it is a solid choice and it's very easy so it kind of pains me a little to do it but we're going to leave it here we're going to leave it in a tier now we've got another two that are kind of connected as well we've got phosphatidylcholine and sunflower lecithin that's a really fun word to say. Try and say lecithin three times really fast. Let me know how you do. So the reason these are connected is one of the compounds in sunflower lecithin that makes it so effective is phosphatidylcholine. But I think that sunflower lecithin should go one tier above phosphatidylcholine because one, it's significantly cheaper. And two, you get other benefits from lecithin that you don't get from choline. So whilst lecithin has choline in it, it also has other phospholipids, which in the context of liver health can be really helpful at thinning out the bile. So if you've accumulated any bile sludge or you have you have gallstones, taking sunflower lecithin can help to break them down, but in a more gentle way, instead of just squeezing them out with, say, a liver gallbladder flush. So I think choline probably should be in B tier because it's a nutrient that's essential for making bile. It's also a methyl donor, and we're going to talk a little bit about methyl donors in a minute, but methyl donors are super important for liver health. So it's going there, and the lecithin consequently is going to go one above it. I feel quite good having the lecithin in A tier. I think it does deserve that spot. So we will leave it here. I will say though, this is sunflower lecithin. You have to be careful. You don't want soy lecithin. Soy lecithin isn't as good. It still works in the same way, but soy is generally best to avoid. Can be GMO, tends to be GMO in the States, and it can be quite estrogenic as well. So we're gonna we're gonna say this is definitely sunflower lecithin, not soy lecithin. Oh, now we're getting down to the final few. We've got six left, and three of these are some of my fondest supplements. So we're gonna start with this one. This is the Custom Probiotics Delactate Free, but I'm gonna use this as a placeholder for any good probiotic, and it has to go in S tier. Reason being, if your gut flora is imbalanced, if you have like a severe gut dysbiosis, if you've got candida overgrowth, if you've got SIBO, if you've got pathogens and gut infections, your digestive system is now the single biggest source of toxicity for your liver. Do you remember towards the beginning of the video I said, often the best thing you can do for the liver is just leave it alone and take work off of it. Well, if you've got a gut dysbiosis, 
if you have an imbalanced microbiome, all of the negatives of that are absorbing and going straight to your liver every single day. Every time you eat something, every time you feed them, every time you're having a die off or a Herxheimer reaction, it's all going straight to your liver and it's just killing your liver. Your liver is just dying. It's, it's doing its best, but it's just completely overwhelmed with work. So one of the best things we can do to help your liver in the long run is correct your microbiome imbalance. If your gut is working really well, not only does it support detoxification, but it also removes what is for most people the single biggest source of chronic toxicity for the liver. So for many Many people this is addressing a root cause of that liver toxicity in the first place and I'm all about addressing root cause so it has to go in S tier. I'll just keep saying it over and over and over again you have to heal your gut. This one might be a little bit controversial but I'm going to take milk thistle and I'm going to put it down in D tier. Now don't get me wrong it's not a bad supplement but I have never heard someone say I took milk thistle and it was like wow it was amazing it changed my life. A lot of people here on the internet oh milk thistle is good for your liver they end up going out and buying it and then they don't really feel any difference positive or negative. And for me, I really think that the way that your body responds to a product is telling you whether it's helpful or harmful. Even if you have a strong negative response, it still tells you it's doing something. Whereas if you're taking something and you don't feel better or worse, you just don't feel anything at all, you're literally just, in my eyes, throwing money in the bin. You're literally just taking money and putting it in one of those shredders. You're just shredding money. It's not doing you any benefit. It makes you feel good because you feel like you're taking something to help your liver because everyone says milk thistle is good for your liver. And I'm not saying it isn't, but for most people, it doesn't doesn't really make that much difference. And when you look at the other things that we're contending with on this list, it definitely does not deserve to be anywhere higher than D tier. But maybe this one's a bit controversial, let me know if you disagree. Or if you are one of these people that has taken milk thistle and you don't feel better or worse. So whilst we're on the topic of controversial subjects, I'm going to do Tudka. And I think many people think Tudka should be all the way up here in S tier. I only know of one, maybe two people that this really made a significant difference for. So I think this is going to go in B tier. So what Tudka is basically is a taurine conjugate of a bile acid. So the reason it's going in beta is taurine is a really important nutrient. It also donates sulfur molecules and I really think sulfur is super important but of about 20 to 25 people that I know that have taken this it's been really helpful for maybe one or two. So for that reason I'm going to stick it in beta and I know potentially controversial but again let me know what do you think? Are you one of these people that it was a game changer for and should be an S or did it really not do that much for you? Maybe it should be in D. If I was rating it for me it would be in D tier. It did nothing. But let's average that out. Let's go for B tier. We've got a good one here we're going to do coffee enemas so if you've never heard of a coffee enema before first of all why are you watching my videos i'm genuinely surprised that you're here and you've never heard of coffee enemas before i've talked about them a lot in the past but secondly why haven't you tried one yet because these can be really really cool the only kind of caveat of people that maybe shouldn't try this are people that tend towards diarrhea especially if you have blood and mucus in your stools but other than that they're one of the most effective liver detoxification methods if we were just going on effect they'd be straight in s tier however they are messy so we're going to bring them down one and I kind of want to bring them down another point as well just because doing an enema at least kind of like and I say this with my clients all the time it's like popping a bubble once you've done the first one you're like wow that was so easy I don't know what I was so worried about and then you do five and it's like you've almost built this routine and it's very easy to do but doing that first one is a bit challenging I don't think anyone comes into this world thinking like yeah I'm going to shove coffee up my ass we just don't think that but it's funny where life takes you because I've done at least a thousand of these so I think we're going to put it in eight here and I'm going to tell you a little story. So the first coffee enema I ever did was in the house where I was living when I got sick. We had a serious mold problem and I was dealing with severe chronic fatigue syndrome of fibromyalgia. And I'd been reading about coffee enemas in the GAPS book, the Gut and Psychology Syndrome Diet by Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride. And I remember reading one of the testimonies in there about how an autistic child was able to speak its first words after doing a coffee enema. And I thought, oh my God, I can't believe it. I'm going to have to do this. And I can remember the look on my dad's face when I told him what I was doing and he just thought I was crazy and I can remember feeling really nervous about doing it and it was just like this really weird procedure but what I can say is the chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia body pains and aches that I'd been living with for months nearly a year at this point that had never really settled below a 7 out of 10 and at this time in particular were around an 8.5 out of 10 reduced all the way to a 0.5 out of 10 in less than 15 minutes the pain and the fatigue that I was experiencing reduced all the way down to less than one point out of 10 before I had even released the enema. And from that point, I knew I'd figured something out. And I knew that I had to try a whole bunch more things that seemed crazy, but in actual reality were very powerful healing modalities. And from there, that's when I tried just about every single thing on this list that we've talked about today. So if my story is making you want to give one a go, make sure you take a look at some of the other videos I have on the channel about coffee enemas. Got about 
three other videos, how they work, how to do them and how to prepare them, and also how to combine them with binders. This is something I didn't know when I started doing them, but combining them with binders can make them even more effective. So take a look at these other videos on the channel for this list. And we're going to do methylation. So this is just a generic methylation supplement. This is methyl care. This is probably a B complex. As you can see, I've already slotted it in in S tier. My thought process here is methylation is one of the most important processes that happens in your body. And methylation happens in your liver more than anywhere else. When I was able to figure out my methylation situation and start methylating properly again, it's one of the things that I believe was a significant factor in my recovery from chronic fatigue syndrome. In fact, to this day, if I don't get my methyl support right, I will develop symptoms like chronic fatigue syndrome within 48 to 72 hours. It's a really long story about how I figured my methylation situation out and what I'm doing now and why I will have these responses if I don't take them. I could cover that in another video if you would be interested in that, but I don't want to make videos that you're not interested in. So if you are interested in learning more about my methylation journey and how I figured out my methylation status and how I optimized all of my supplements, then let me know, leave me a comment because I really need to know that it's something that you want because it's a lot of time, it's a lot of effort, it's a lot of energy, and it's a story you might not even really be interested in. So if you are, please make sure you let me know so I can put it up there on my priorities list. But for many people, I would say probably a third of my clients, and we're verging on the thousands now, getting methylation working for you, optimizing the methylation process is an absolute life changer. So I, I would feel weird putting it anywhere other than S tier. Actually, saying that, it is very complex. So for that reason, I am going to bring it down to A tier. It is absolutely life-changing, but it is probably one of the most complex and advanced concepts when it comes to alternative healing. The only thing I would say that maybe goes further than this is understanding a HTMA test. So that's the hair mineral analysis. I still have no idea what those things mean and how do you interpret them. They're extremely complex. Complex. I would say that that's probably the only thing in my eyes that is as complicated or more complicated than understanding methylation. So for that reason, I am going to bring it down just because it's pretty complicated. And finally, on this list, we have digestive enzymes. Digestive enzymes are such a such a trusty supplement. They're so good. They're so versatile. They're so usable. And I feel bad for putting everything in in the A tier, but they they have to go there. I can't put them in S tier just because what what we have here already: fasting, apple cider vinegar, probiotics. I don't quite think they're on that level, but maybe they are. Because if you think about the thought process that got the probiotic in the first position, whatever toxicity you have coming from your gut is poisoning your liver. If you don't digest your food properly, all of that food feeds pathogens that poison your liver. And in my experience, digestive enzymes, for me personally, and also for the majority of my clients, are the supplement that has the most impact, at least in the short term, on the digestive system, therefore taking the enormous load of work off the liver. I think we're actually sneaking them up here and I'm also going to share something else with you. There's a concept in, in your body called enzyme capacity and this is quite easily understood as the fact that your body only has so much metabolic energy and it can only produce so many enzymes in a day and on an average day most of the enzymes we produce are produced for digestion. So if we take digestive enzymes we take that load off. We allow the body to redirect that energy. So instead of putting all of this metabolic energy, all of this effort into producing digestive enzymes, it can produce other enzymes instead. Enzymes that are used in detoxification, that are used in cellular repair, that are used to, say, recycle glutathione, to methylate. Your body is intelligent, and if you free it up from doing a job that's costing it a lot of energy, it doesn't just get lazy and stop doing it. It takes that energy and redirects it into something else. So I know I said it was going in A, but it has to go in S tier. I just can't put it anywhere else. They're so well tolerated. They've made the biggest difference for the most amount of people, maybe of any supplement on this whole list. They address a core dysfunction of not being able to just digest your food correctly. They can make a huge difference for that. And if you are digesting your food properly, not only are you not poisoning yourself from your digestive system, you're also nourishing yourself correctly. And your liver needs nutrients to be able to do all of the things that it needs to do. So this is our finalized list. In S tier, the absolute best modalities to support your 
your liver health and detoxification. We have fasting, apple cider vinegar, a good probiotic. Here we've got the D-lactate free formula by Custom Probiotics and a good digestive enzyme. Here we've got Digest Gold by Enzymedica. In the A tier, so still very good options, still very worth doing. We've got juicing, especially vegetable juicing. We have vitamin C, generally liposomal is better. We have lemon water, first thing in the morning is best, ideally before food. We have sunflower lecithin, also a methyl donor, so very cool for that reason, but really good if you have bile sludge or bile stones. Coffee enemas, amazing if you have any kind of fat soluble toxicity. This is heavy metals, this is mold, mycotoxins, plastics and pesticides. Absolutely phenomenal for all of these. And finally in A tier we have methylation support. As I said, would be an S tier but is very complex. If you need a little bit of extra help with methylation, make sure you reach out to me, shoot me an email, support at williamdickinson.co.uk and I'll get you set up with methylation. If you don't want to do a consult because you're not interested or you can't afford it, make sure you go and check out my methylation video. I've got a little introduction video to methylation basics that you might find really helpful because this is an extremely complex topic. Down in B tier, still solid choices, but potentially some drawbacks or maybe not the best return on investment. We've got liver and gallbladder flushes. Very aggressive, very inconvenient. I don't like having diarrhea. I don't know about you. Maybe you enjoy it. I don't, so it's on B tier. Activated charcoal. Looking at this, I'm thinking maybe it could go in A tier. I really do like binders. At one stage, I really didn't like them, but I'm starting to see the benefits a little bit more. The thing is, our natural binders are supposed to be fibers, which you get some of them in this juicing, and probiotics, which we've got, again got up here. So for that reason, yeah, it can't really go higher. Still solid option. It's definitely worth having a binder in your house. I've always got a bottle of activated charcoal on hand in case I'm herxing or if I my stomach's not feeling right. It's always good to have. Then we've got glutathione own again probably want liposomal little bit expensive but do make sure you get a good quality product phosphatidylcholine not a bad supplement at all but sunflower lecithin is just a bit better and tudka if tudka works for you then amazing i've not really seen many benefits and i've not seen many benefits in others as well but generally this could be good if you have problems digesting and absorbing fats and if you need a little bit of extra sulfur to help your liver do the things it wants to do in c tier still very good things but maybe not worth the time or the effort that's involved maybe not worth the money we got castor oil packs, absolute disaster of mess. Perhaps having diarrhea all day with the liver gallbladder flush is worse, but being covered in a sticky honey-like substance, also not very enjoyable. And if you spill it or you get it all over your furniture, it, uh, absolute nightmare, horrible. So C tier. NAC, kind of same thing as Tudka. I hear good things about it, but in practice, haven't really seen them. And then in D tier, and I would say this is probably money better spent elsewhere. We've got digestive bitters. So for these, you can just do lemon water. You can have some vinegar before your meal. You can do juicing. You can even have like a small salad with some bitter vegetables. It's very easy to get the effects. And also who wants to carry liquids around with them? You know, if you're trying to take bitters before a meal, who carries this sort of stuff to a restaurant? Liquids don't travel well. But I suppose not all bitters are liquids, just most of them are. But anyway, D tier, we're leaving it there. And finally, milk thistle. Again, not a bad supplement, just don't think it's all it's cracked up to be. You'd be far better off spending your time, effort, energy, money in some of these S and A tier things than buying a milk thistle supplement. I just don't think that's really that good. So that's everything, but let me know, do you disagree with anything? If you could choose one supplement or modality on this list and move it somewhere else, what would you move and why? And finally, do you think I'm miss anything. If there's any supplements or modalities that you think should have been on this list but weren't, again, let me know in the comment section below what they are and why you think they deserve to be on this list. So that's it. I hope you found it really helpful and interesting and informative. And if you have any questions, please let me know. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.